morning, everyone. I am Allie, and welcome to this uh, Facebook Live rendition of the Better Beater episode. So I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit of Better Beatering on the uh, Facebook app here, rather than on YouTube. We'll then post it on YouTube, changing it up a little bit, doing all different stuff. So good morning from Mechanicsburg. Good morning. Eva's looking for a blanket. Good morning, Eva. Welcome. Good night, Eva. Good morning. Good midday. Depending on where you guys are, it's all different times of the day. And usually, for those of you watching, on Saturday mornings, usually around 9 o'clock, we publish a weekly series called Better Beater Episodes. So these, as you hear and as it says, are designed to make you a better beater. So the idea is that we answer questions that you have. Usually these questions come from people in uh, the form of emails to us, to the company, as far as questions that are asked and having wondered about that. Have I duct taped the kids to the floor yet? Denise wants to know, have I duct taped you to the floor yet? You want to lean forward a little bit? No. No, you're hiding. Annabella is here, but she's hiding. She's hiding. You can lean forward and people will see you. Yeah? Yes? No. She, she's hiding with her headphones on and she doesn't want anybody to see her. Oh, there she is at the beach. She's here at the beach with me. So 3 p.m. there. So no, I have not, um, I have successfully not duct taped my kids to the floor yet, but that is a good idea. We did get a trampoline, so that's been a, a good addition. Although today it's raining, uh, but that won't stop the kids. Hopefully it gets a little bit nicer out as well. So hello to Norma from Florida. Hello to a bunch of people waving. I'll send you guys waves. Hey to Denise. Hello, hello. My phone doesn't want to send a wave. I'll send waves to all of you people that are watching. So, everyone that's watching and having fun. Um, yeah, so welcome to this episode of Better Beater. This is actually episode number 91. So we are going live for episode 91. And I did put in our Facebook group for beating and jewelry making an opportunity for people to ask questions ahead of time. That gives me a little bit of time to do some research. So Erin, I saw you're on here. I'm going to answer some of your nodding questions and some of the definitions of the sizes and what they mean. So stay tuned for that. We also had a couple of questions about uh, Diamond Duo, the halo for diamonds and kind of what fits in. So I have that going. How to bezel a pear drop. So I'm gonna show basically just how to do the top from the peyote standpoint, how to go from being a straight line in peyote to kind of making it triangular at the top. So I'll do that and show you how to do an actual pair. And what do we have? What else do I have? Oh, size of needles. So somebody wanted to know about um, a tulip size 13 needle and wanted to see how it was used and how you actually get the needle into it. So I have a brand new tulip size 13. They were wondering whether or not they're worth the investment. So I have a tulip needle in a size 13. If you've ever been wondering, I'll flatten out some thread and we'll try to thread it and I'll see that needle. And then I also have one of our new, just to show, once I show how to do the top of the pair in a nice pointed angle, I'll also show how to do the top of one of our new triangles. So we just got triangles in as well for PC, PC rundos. Greetings from Canada as well. So hey to Erla as well. Hello to Yolette. Hi to Arlene. Hello to everyone joining in. Hi, hi, hi. And good morning to Bella. She's still waking up, hanging out here. She wanted to come with me, even though she knows she kind of has to sit quietly. So she's got her headphones on, and, and she's good to go. So hello to Cameron Earl, sneak it in there. And to Phyllis, hello to Eva and to Loda and to Denise on here as well. So good morning to everyone. We are going to be kind of rapidly going through things and questions people have. So if you, the way that a Q&A works is, if you have a question, make sure to ask it and I'll see if I can get to it. I already have a list of questions that people had asked prior to this and we'll go over those and then we will go into additional questions from the audience. Also make sure that if you have a question about something that I'm talking about to ask the question then so that way we get through this as well. So any questions make sure that you ask them and I will try to answer as many questions in this fun beating hour as I can. So Hello from Puerto Rico, hello from Wisconsin, hello to everybody joining in. All right, so 
Uh, I'll be watching and working on a toggle for a necklace. Sounds good. Eva's watching and working. Watching and working. All right, so the first thing I thought I would do while we're visiting to the beach is come on over here, and we are going to unpack a size 13 needle. So Tulip brand needles are known for their durability that when you are using them, they don't bend a ton, they don't have a ton of... Um, or they have a big eye for the size that they are. And honestly, I have never worked with a size 13 tulip needle. So somebody was asking how this compares to a size 12. So I'm gonna open it up and check this out. So they come in two per pack because they are harder. Think thinner needle, smaller needle, it's actually harder to produce. So the thinner and smaller needles are going to be more expensive. So here's a tulip size 12 for the longest time I thought that these containers were glass and then I realized it was plastic as I was being fragile with them and trying not to not to use them one thing that I would say is when you open a new tulip needle mark at the top exactly what the size is so take a sharpie marker and actually mark it on the top like write it on the top that way you know what size it is so a size 13 comes with two in the case and already they are definitely shorter so, and really tiny, so you can hardly see them. One of the things that Tulip has to know whether or not you have a Tulip needle, eventually it kind of wears off, but they have that gold tip to them. So you can see it's silver and then gold. They are gonna have, the Tulip needles are gonna have a gold tip. So they are definitely shorter. So here's my bent up size 12 needle. I can straighten it out. Here's another little hint. What you can do is take a needle that's really bent up and either throw it away, or you can take it and straighten it out. So tulip needles are known for keeping their shape and not bending in luck or a lot. I bend needles all the time, so I really like the 12 because it's inexpensive and this is just the pony brand. So here's a pony brand 12 versus a tulip size 13. So you can see the difference in length for sure. You've got a whole, where's my ruler here? Mm, I don't know where my exact ruler is. Somewhere floating around here. But you've got a whole, uh, little less than a half an inch difference in size so that's going to be the length that it is it is lengthwise i know that it says it on here somewhere right there length size so it is 35 millimeters long and the pony brand needles i don't think they say it on the outside of their packaging how long they are it doesn't pony brand needles are right about um, an inch so kind of looking at that so uh, since started working with the shorter needles, Denise said she feels much better. So we'll see who feels better and whatnot. Bella, you're poking in the corner. Can I shift you right over, shift your stool? That way, and that way, and shift the stool back and that way. <laughs> there we go, everybody can just see her a tiny, tiny little bit poking through. Can you use wildfire uh, with size 12 needles? You absolutely can. So I have wildfire on here with a size 12. And what I'm gonna do is take the other end of my wildfire. This is white wildfire beading thread in 0 .006. I'm gonna flatten out this end and we are going to see how easily I can do a size 13 needle. So I've worked with the wildfire needles. Uh, they are super tiny. Uh, tulip needles, again, are supposed to have that kind of nice big opening that I shouldn't struggle too much and I'm not struggling at all to get that needle thread in. These definitely have a smaller eye than the size 10 or 12 of them. And I will say it just gets some getting used to. Uh, as far as having a shorter needle, not poking yourself with a shorter needle definitely are a, is definitely a, a skill that you don't want to uh, do is poke yourself with a needle. If I switch from a size 12 to a short one, like a wildfire or this tulip 13, I'm bound to poke myself but when you get smaller amounts of thread, it is kind of nicer. When would you use this? So you wanna to wanna to use it with a lot of shapes because what you're gonna do with a lot of shapes is you're going to end up having it be pretty heavy and you won't feel comfortable using it because if I'm using this with my Diamond Duo Halo, this is a pretty flimsy needle because it's a size 12. Now it'll go on there, but I prefer a thicker needle when I'm working with bigger beads. So I actually like a size 10 if I'm doing a lot of multi-hole beads. If I'm doing Charlottes, you're gonna want a size 13 or a wildfire needle because the Charlottes are super little, tiny, tiny holes, even smaller than 15 O's. So, uh, Pony 12s are my go-to. I prefer a bent needle. Exactly, me too, Erin, I prefer that as well. 
Wildfire is thicker than the Japanese thread, which I find easier to use with 12 and 13. Definitely true, Denise. Um, Eva says she just stocked up with longer ones, but will at least try the shorter ones. So yeah, so the some of these, so this is the size 13 needle in the Tulip brand versus a size 12 pony needle. So you can see the difference in length. So this is kind of my go-to needle versus the shorter one. Distance in length is about a quarter of an inch, which it takes a little bit getting used to. I would definitely poke myself, just to let you know. But again, kudos to Tulip. They are a more expensive needle for sure, but they are a lot easier to thread because that hole is definitely bigger. The wildfire needle is pretty hard to thread, but I know we have a couple of people that love wildfire beading needles. The 13s, again, if you are using uh, si or Charlotte's, size 15 Charlotte seed beads, which are going to be um, a check seed bead in a very, very small size, smaller than actual 15s, even though they say they're 15s, um, that's when a size 13 needle will come in handy. So that was the unveiling of the size 13 needle. Yes, it works with, oh, one thing I should have tried. I don't know if I have any thicker wildfire over here, but let me try that. Generally speaking, if you're using this tiny needle, it's because you have a smaller bead. So you're not gonna end up using it with a thicker wildfire or fire line anyway. So here's a 0.8. Let's see if I can get this on here. So this is the thicker of the wildfire. And usually I don't use the thicker. The only thing I tend to use the thicker wildfire for that 0 0.008 is going to be with, um, oh, got that one on too. So we're good to go. Um, I generally will use that with my leather wrap bracelets and that's what I'm gonna be using it for more than anything else. So I was able to thread that needle pretty, pretty easily. Actually way easier than a size 12 needle in the Pony brand with the 0 0.008 wildfire beading thread. So. Tried it, done, good to go. Hi to Carol from Georgia as well. Hello from Pittsburgh and Alabama to Linda. And more expensive, so typically use the John James, Lori says about the tulip needles. Yeah, tulip needles are kind of the premium, higher end brand needles, I will say. And a lot of times it's what you learn with that you end up loving. I learned with the inexpensive pony needles. The John James needles, for some reason, the way that I hold them, I tend to snap them and break them. I think you either love or you hate needles, just like you love or you hate thread when you're working with it. So there's always those battles on thread and needles, and it's who loves what and what you like from where. So those are tulip size 13 needles. Good to go. Here they are. Solved that issue. Yes, you can thread regular thread with them. So the other thing that I wanted to know with the tulip needles, is there a purpose to that little piece of paper in the cap? That is the little piece of paper in the cap that was just their quality control sticker. So it looks like it could be um, some sort of paper to keep uh, moisture out, but I'm pretty sure it's just like a, hey, this one was double checked safety paper. If anybody can read Japanese writing, you can let us know what it says but I don't read Japanese, so I think it's like some sort of quality control thing. But if somebody reads Japanese, definitely let me know what it says. If you can see those characters, you might not be able to see the characters as great, but I'll put that back in there just in case. It was in the cap, and it's in all of the different tulip needle caps, so I think it's a quality control thing, so. All right, so looking here. Yeah, needle sizes, so Denise kind of said it the best, and needle sizes and brands are like buying clothes. It comes down to the personal preference and how it makes you feel. True, true. All right, so the other question we had was about the Diamond Duo Halos. So the, or the Diamond Halos, I should say. The Diamond Halos, obviously a Diamond Duo fits in exactly. A Gem Duo fits in pretty well. What else fits in? So I have here the fact that a... Right there is a half tila. Half tila is gonna fit in no problem. I have a bunch of seed beads. You're gonna get seed beads up to 11-0 if you wanna do them side by side. Eight O seed beads are gonna get, you could do one eight O in the middle. And then I have here a four millimeter crystal to show you kind of how it sits. So here is a four millimeter round Swarovski and in the light olivine color, and I use it for the Gatsby bracelet. You can see that will fit in, and what you can do 
is demi rounds rather than 15 O's or Charlotte's on the sides of either one and kind of come out of there. I used a size two millimeter crystal and 15 O's on either side and got an X um, in my one pair of earrings and it fit beautifully. So play around, let us know what you do. These are the Halo four diamond shaped beads. Again, fitting the diamond duo perfectly, but then also keep in mind you can have fun with other shapes like this one here is a two hole lentil. I could put a two hole lentil sitting up like that through the two holes and then 11 O's on either side or 15 O's on the other side rather and kind of play around with that shape. So I'm going to be playing around more with the Halo Diamond Duos. The only bummer with the Halo for Diamond is that our factory in Greece that produces them is closed down. So what we have right now is what we have and we'll have to um, go in and order more as soon as that factory is back up and running. So Tamara says, Allie, the 10 Sharps needles are great for leatherworking. Good to know. So the John James 10 Sharps are going to be great for leatherworking. Good to know, Tamara. So the I should have brought over some John James needles to go over them with you. Uh, this is what the packaging looks like for the Pony Brand 12 versus the Tulip Brand. The Tulip Brand, again, you're getting two. Pony Brand, you're getting 20 needles. So if they get bent up, again, so here's how what to do if they get bent up. So I'm sure, I, oh, this is a nice one. So going back, here's a nice size 12 needle. And then let me see if I have a size 10 here. I have a lot of 12s. I was going to see if I have a size 10 to show you the difference of the 10 versus the 12. But I've got all 12s. I can find a size 10. Annabella, would you like to be my assistant? And find underneath here the size 10 needles. I'm pretty sure they're in there. So... Pony needles always break on me. Yeah, so see, it's funny. I think Lori said that the pony needles break on her, and I said the John James break on me. I think it depends on what you're using and which needle you prefer. But if you get a needle that's really bent up, so this is a really bent up size 12 pony needle, don't be scared to go in, because really, what does it matter if you break it? It's like 14 cents. And if you've used it a couple times and it's gotten bent, you can see it has a pretty flimsy piece here which I actually like. I like that it bends. And I'm just literally heating it up a little bit with my hands just like a wire worker and straightening it out. Now if I have any like big turns in it I can go in with my pliers and kind of straighten it out down along the line. The one thing you want to do if you are reshaping out your pliers make sure you don't pinch down on that end because what will happen is obviously you'll close up the needle so you don't want to do that. So. Hello from Slovak Republic. Hello from Hagerstown, Maryland as well. Storm halos in the works. They're two of my favorite beads and I use them with other diamonds. So more halos are definitely in the works. So please stop bin shopping, be kind and share the beads. <laughs> yeah, so don't, uh, don't buy all, all the beads. So now we, uh, we've been pretty good. Okay, next question comes from Erin. So Erin, I saw you were on here. You were asking about Eslon, Stelon, um, and all those other names and numbers. So that's okay, Bella. I'll go. I'll go over. Bella was looking for a size 10, but couldn't. So all right, Erin. So this is hopefully going to answer your question, but some of those text numbers are completely pointless in my mind. So I wrote down here just so we would have a reference. So Erin asked about nodding and the what the text means. So if you have here our Eslon, so the first thing I'll say is Eslon versus Ceylon. Two different suppliers, same thing. Eslon is going to be Beadsmith, Ceylon is going to be Caravan. So Caravan started this actually type of line, which was probably used by, you know, fishing industry or something like that. And then obviously we adopt it to the beading world. This one is a Tex 210. So whether or not you're an Eslon or a Ceylon, same thing. You don't really need to worry about the S versus the C because you're getting the same product. So it is the same thing, different, doesn't really matter. All right. So they're probably honestly made in the same factory by the same company and not even a difference really between the two. What is going to be different is the size and the text. So this one they call a medium weight. And it's three ply, meaning you've got three cords that are twisted around, and it's text 210. So, what does that mean? 
So tex is the weight in grams of 1,000 meters. So if I went in and spooled out 1,000 meters of this, it would be 210 grams is basically what it is. How does that help you? I'm not real sure, honestly, but that's the deal. So text is the weight in grams of 100 meters of thread. So 100 meters of thread weight equals X. So basically one gram equals one text. So if you get one gram, 1,000 meters, that'd be incredibly thin, uh, you'd get one text. So the S on that we carry is 210 text. Why we really carry this is not so much for knotting, which you can do with it. I was gonna show you how I'm knotting the end. And I should have thought about this when I brought a bead that had a big enough hole. Or I'd, So normally what I would do is take some super glue, glue down the end and make my own needle out of the thread. And what I'm gonna do is drop this down. So this is an 80C bead. Generally speaking, this is used for our beaded kumihimo. So this 210 or this medium weight is going to be used for kumihimo. It's about a size, I want to say six when you're thinking of silk thread, that would be about the size equivalence. If I tie a knot, it'll stay, so it does work. It is cheaper than the silk cording, it just has a different feel for sure. So if you're thinking, do I want to knot with this, and this 210 size is the one that you want to, there's also a micro size, I think it's one... I don't want to misquote, it's 100 and something text, but um, this will work and it will put on a lot of beads because it is thin. So you're thinking about this as like a size six or a size four silk cord. So here's a size four. It's right about that same thickness as a size four when you're looking at it silk thread wise. The bummer is it does not come with a needle attached but it definitely is a cheaper alternative for knotting. And it looks pretty, like this one here is the khaki color. You can knot and it's going to hold that knot. The issue then is what to do at the end. You're gonna want a uh, pearl, a knot cover. Let's see if I have one here. Mm -hmm. I just have a side one, but at least it gives a reference. Oh, here's, here's one, I think. Here we go, I have a gold one. Okay, if you ever have to count out knot covers, it's terrible, just for the record. So just like the silk thread, you're gonna take your cord and whether or not it's your Eslon or your Ceylon, you're gonna go right into the back of that knot cover. And if I had glued, super glued this cord together, it would be much easier because it'll go right through there. You'll notice with this Eslon, if you don't uh, glue it, see how that's starting, that three braid, that three pry braid is starting to kind of come apart. All right, pulled it through. You're gonna take your silk thread, your Eslon, your uh, Tex 210 Eslon or your Ceylon, drop it down to your next or to last knot and then tie another knot to go in there. Now this being the starting side, this is kind of thinking of it as my finishing side. For a starting side, I tie the knot and then slip this on basically backwards. And for this side here, what you want to do, I should have left myself a little bit more. You're going to take the thread down through, and you don't want to tie the knot close right here because what you want to do is get like a piece of wire. See, here's a size 24, but if I have a size 20, that works best. We're beating all. Put that into the loop. Now, I've tied that thread basically around this wire. Push the wire down into, this wire is not quite thick enough. Push the wire down into that knotted area as tightly as you can. See how I was able to pull it into there. Slide that out, give a nice tight pull, and that will get the needle then as, or the knot as close into the wire guard as you can, or in, as close, excuse me, into the knot cover as you can. I would tie a second one, but then basically what you'll do is put on whatever clasp or jump ring or anything that you're doing. Take that ring then. Take your pliers. Round nose pliers actually works really well for this. When you're bending this, you want to think of it as you're bending it kind of right to that line. If you bend it inside the loop, the problem is it can open up and then um, your whole clamshell opens up. So you want to bend it kind of right towards the top. You don't want to tuck it inside the clamshell. Some people will tuck it in the clamshell. 
I want it nice and tight here. When I tuck it in the clamshell, what happens is it can actually go into the clamshell. And then I close up the clamshell and I have that nice finished end. You can take a burner then and burn down that thread, but that's how you're gonna do the end of the cord. Now anything bigger than a Tex 210, you're gonna struggle putting actual beads onto that cord. So the great thing with a silk cord or a silk needle, so I thought I brought over, Bella, where's my bucket? Am I missing one? I brought over 10, 8, 4, oh, there it is. 10, 8, 4, and 6 in my silk cord. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you floating around here somewhere was my wax linen cording. You see my wax linen cord floating around anywhere? It was here a couple minutes ago. Anyway, Annabelle, if you see the wax linen cording, let me know. That's another great option to work with. We actually have kids' kits that we just put out. So if you're looking for a kit for your child, for your grandchild, for somebody to put together, Bella helped you make some of the examples. Everett helped you make examples. So if you check out, we have kids' kits available. Definitely check those out as well. So if you've been looking for kids' kits, and hello, I'll say to Flo and Jay and Mary Denise and Linda, hello to everybody joining in. Um, are those cup-type crimps strong enough to secure a clasp? So yes, yeah, so it is. You have... When you have the clasp here, one thing with the sterling silver ones, sometimes I actually will bend them into the actual cup portion of it, but they are really strong. One thing that you wanna make sure is they can open up. I mean, it's a metal. Uh, make sure when you're using it, try not to use it with a split ring. You wanna use it with like a soldered ring. That's gonna be your better success for having them fun there. The best are, yeah, the knot covers are better with the lighter. Heavier beads will straighten out the loop and the clam. So it depends on, so this is my advice too. If you are using a fun ending, make something if you're knotting that you can put the clasp or the closure in the front. That's actually really nice too. Bella's telephone or headphones must be green. Bella's headphones are green. Apparently you can't see them. If you come into, well, they're, they're turquoise. So if you come in, you can see that they're, yeah, it's on they're, my sweatshirt. there's turquoise and some on your sweatshirt, you just kind of, blend into the black background. I can put my fingers through. Whoa, there you go. There's Bella. So weird, I know, so weird. Gosh, mom, so weird. All right, glad to hear the text numbers are practically useless. They were throwing me off. So good to know that it's C -Lon, S -Lon or Sam. Thank you so much for the info. You are welcome, Erin. I'm glad you're here. And then I wanted to show you too. So this is the difference in sizes of silk thread. So silk thread has to do with a number. So you see a number uh, 0.6 millimeters, 0.7 millimeters, a 10 is 0.9 millimeters, and 8 is 0.8. So 8 is going to be your standard, basically. 8 is 8 millimeters. As you start to get lower, it starts to get less kind of accurate in the millimeter size, but it's around the size number that it is. You kind of round up or round down and you get there. When you're talking about knotting, if you're not sure what size to go with, six is kind of the standard easy size to go. So what gauge uh, size jump ring do you suggest? Um, I suggest 20 gauge or thicker. Anything smaller than that, unless it's soldered, like a 22 gauge, a 24 gauge ring, it's gonna open up. So this one here is a soldered 20 gauge ring, I can tell that, or soldered 22 maybe. So it's a closed ring. Soldered or closed are gonna be the same thing, and that's a closed ring. So, hope you're doing well. We are doing very well. Hello to Rita as well too. So, I found that silk thread and salons are only good for knotting. What else can you do with the threads, if anything? So, you can do, so, same deal. Not pearls, not beads, anything along with that. Silk thread. I also use these to make uh, the leather wrap bracelets. You can use them in the silk thread. The nice thing with the Griffin silk is that I was going to show if you're unfamiliar. This is a size 6. Again, kind of a good starter size. They have, it has a needle already attached. And you can see it's kind of bendy because it was in there. But it's just a twisted wire. And they put it and they attach the thread to it. So basically the thread goes through this, then it gets twisted around itself. So you'll notice sometimes at the needle it's kind of untwisting a little bit. What you'll do is 
take this off eventually. We do have a wide eye needle that you can put the end of thread in, but this is great because the thread's not doubled over itself at all, so it goes through more things. The size six thread, which you'll take out and kind of stretch, that's one thing you don't really need to stretch the s -lon or the c -lon versus the silk thread. You do want to stretch that prior to putting it onto your projects too. Made it for a live feed from Statesboro, Georgia. So hey to Cheryl tuning in and to Linda as well and Jennifer. Uh, to Daisy and hello from Lenox, California to Laura as well. So hi to everybody checking in. We are talking a little bit about um, S-Lon, C-Lon, silk thread, kind of how to do the ends of the knots and kind of where to go with that. Yeah, the text thread, I mean, there's different, when it comes to threads and different types of threads, you're going to have poundage, you're going to have text as the number T-E-X, not like we're texting each other like Bella's doing right now. She's probably texting somebody. She's watching Frozen, actually. Now that no, I see it, Bella's it, watching Frozen. No, it's what they think is going to be in Frozen Oh, it's a trailer 3. for Frozen 3. No, it's what they think is going to be in Frozen 3. Oh, uh, what they think. Predictions. Predictions of Frozen 3. All right, so that's going to be your size silk versus your, um, versus your actually text. So another question, didn't you use silk for all the time necklace? I did use silk for all the time necklace. So sometimes I use silk or even this Aslan for basic stringing. I like the way it feels. I'm not a huge fan of, what do I have here? I thought I had some. So here's Beadalon wire. Um, it's great for what it's used for if you're stringing, if you're doing something. It's a nylon coated stainless steel. This one's a little bit thicker. It's 0 .00, or sorry, 0 0.024 inches or 0 0.61 millimeter. So looking at it size-wise, it's going to be about the same thickness as a size 4 in thread-wise. And the same thickness is the size uh, 210 text of the Eslon. But it has a little bit of a stiffness to it. Now if I did 49 strands, more strands per wire. So those of you that are unfamiliar, this is a good idea to use, uh, to say. So, good time to segue into this. So Beadalon, if you're using Beadalon wire, the strand size is not going to have any determination on the actual size of the wire. The strand size is going to be the number of, basically, pieces of stainless steel that are twisted around one another to make the cord. So you can see here, better flexibility. See all those little 19 pieces of wire that are in that plastic coating? When you get to 49 strand wire, it's gonna be more flexible. It's always gonna be a, um, a, an odd number. So there is seven strand, three strand, seven strand, 19 strand, 49 strand of wire. It's kind of what they do as their standards. What is gonna matter is the millimeter or the inch size of the thread. So I can have 49 strand in the same size, I can have seven strand in the same size, or I can have 19 strand in the same size. The more strand numbers that are in there, the more it becomes flexible. So the better wire is gonna be the 49 strand. But I still prefer, if I'm stringing, I still prefer to like use a silk cord and not, even if I'm not knotting in between the, the cord, I like that. But beware that the stainless steel wire is going to hold up a fair amount better. So, um, which is Bella's favorite character in Frozen? What's your favorite character in Frozen? You're pulled by the audience. Um, Elsa. Elsa. She went predictable. I'll go with Anna. I think she's funny. So, I think Anna is my favorite. Anna. New to beading, so what's the difference between using Eslon and the nylon thread for beading? So, Kathy, when you're looking at it, so I have Beadalon here, which is actually a stainless steel cable wire, beading wire. Then I have the wildfire beading thread, which is going to be thread for using thread and needles. And then you kind of have the Eslon and the silk thread, which is for things in between, or has the same uses. You just need to make sure that your beads will fit onto the thread. So I have a ton, a ton of YouTube videos and a bunch of uh, the Better Beater episodes actually concentrating on some of this. But it was fun to realize that one text is 1,000 meters of thread. And I'm like, then I'm thinking, I'm like, who's going to stand there and count out 1,000 meters of thread? That's a lot of thread. This Eslon is 77 yards. 
So we get how many meters divided by three, or the meter and yard, it's gonna be feet. So you're looking at a ton of thread, is what you're looking at. All right, so one of the other questions that somebody had that I just wanted to touch on, we'll go back to the beach for this one. Back to the beach here. Somebody wanted to know about chokers. Could I make a pattern for a choker for the summer? One thing that I wanted to say, Debbie asked a question about fringe earrings. I'm not gonna ignore it, Debbie, I'm coming right back to it. Um, one thing that I wanted to say about chokers, keep in mind, most bracelet patterns will make four chokers. So think about a lot of bracelets are gonna sit kind of flatter on the wrist. Most of those are going to work for a necklace. So if you wanna make a choker, it's basically double a bracelet. Instead of seven inches, seven and a quarter of bracelet, you're gonna have 15 inches of a necklace. So think about the fact that if you do wanna do a choker design, you're just taking the example and the pattern and elongating it or lengthening it as well. I'll go into and make a lot of chokers where all I do are going in and taking like the Eslon cord or the silk cord, putting one bead in the middle, tying and doing those knot covers at the end, and that's one bead on it. I like really simple. Or like the one that I have on is almost a choker. All it is is three Eva beads, hanging down on two head pins with chain coming out. I really should do four. I feel like I should have four in my little arrow that way. They could be like one for each kid. But I have that going on with just that little simple choker. But keep in mind, if you do want a beaded choker, that you can go in and elongate any bracelet to make that beaded choker. So, so yeah, so De uh, Denise said, the text is used more at the factory level where they manufacture miles of thread per minute. Correct. All right, so Debbie asked a great question. Debbie wanted to know, she said, I wanna make fringe earrings, what do you recommend for flowing fringe? So, if you are making fringe earrings that hang down, and I don't have a great example here, I wish I did, honestly. Um, let me see what I've got. Do I have any fringe hanging down? No. Nope. All right, so one thing with the fringe. So if you have fringe, you're gonna want to use more of an, more of a uh, unconditioned thread. So with wildfire, it's a third of a bonded thread for bead weaving. So is fire line. That being said, they're gonna be a little bit stiffer. I would recommend using a, um, not an Eslon, it's gonna be too thick. Even their, their lightweight one is going to be too thick. I would recommend using some 1G, some Mayuki KO thread, or some Hana thread. They're gonna relax a lot nicer. What you can do is, if you are doing an earring, and say the top of it, you're gonna do a triangle, and then you're hanging fringe down. If you want that triangle to stay a little thicker, use two pieces of thread. So use the wildfire thread for the triangle piece that's gonna hang at the top, and then as you're doing fringe, hanging down for the bottom, switch over from the wildfire to the Eslon or the KO thread, that will help wonders because you do want that relaxation when it comes to going in and actually using the thread. So Debbie, if you want to check that out, go in and uh, check out using Eslon or, um, or sorry, KO thread or, oh, but you can thread, oh, I can't, can't, uh, can't yawn that. And thanks, Lori, for that all the time necklace link. With the all the time necklace, I made beaded beads basically and slid them onto there. So if you are using fringe earrings, use some of the Eslon, or use some of the KO thread or the Miyuki thread or even the Hannah thread because that's gonna make a much more relaxed version of it. The other thing that somebody wanted to know, and I thought, I I'm not gonna show exactly how to bezel a pair. I will do a video on that. So we have some videos on a pair. And then somebody else asked for destination tags as well and kind of how to do destination tags more simply. And with the destination tags more simply, I would say if you just take a uh, bale, a pinch bale, put it at the top and then hang some charms at the bottom, your destination charm can hang on the side or go to the sides. I will show that and I'm gonna, I actually have a video already started for that. So what I wanted to show was with this pair drop or say I have one of my triangles here. If I have my triangle or I have my pear drop, and good morning to Valerie as well too. I need some Delica beads. So I've got some Delicas in a bright pink, but that'll work. What I'm gonna do is just sew a quick row of 
Delicas to show you. So say you were anticipating, I don't know, 34 Delicas to go around there. You'd string all your Delicas on in your line, make it go into a circle by tying it into a loop, and then after you tied it into a loop, you'd start your peyote stitch. What I'm going to show you right now, and actually I'm going to take this off, put a stop bead on, and then show you. Ooh, that's a pearl. Bridget must have been using that in her last live, so kind of a funky stop bead. We're using a pearl, two millimeter pearl. All right, so if I'm going to do my line of peyote beads, so I'm doing my line of peyote stitch here, you're going to think about the fact that you're going to actually start almost getting a herringbone look as you want it to turn into a nice corner. So here I have, let me go just a tiny bit longer so you can see. And I'm switching it up today. I have a piece of uh, black felt here that I'm beading on. I was doing a lot of silver and gold stuff earlier this week, so I put this down to see if um, it was making it able to see a little bit easier. So, uh, yeah, Miyuki thread, Toho 1G, KO threads are all finer and still strong. True, true. So, and now everybody is going to yawn, I know, for sure. So, do you know... Uh, do you need to condition uh, KO or HANA thread first? So KO and HANA thread, I say you don't need to, it's up to you, but I don't usually. So, all right, so I'm going back here and I'm gonna do my peyote stitch. So I'm skipping a bead, those of you that don't know peyote stitch, what I'm gonna do is add a bead, skipping over one bead, and then we're gonna sew through. Hey Yoda Lindsay, hey there Smiley, hi Lindsay, good morning Bridget as well. All right, so there I have on my Delica bead. I skip a bead, throw another Delica on. I'm gonna go halfway down this line and then I'm gonna show you after we add these beads how we're going to kind of create that cornering effect. And whether or not, so actually for the triangle, what I thought would be awesome is creating a triangle for it to lay on and then we will create a bezel for that. So I'll do a video on that, just using the triangle or the pyramids or kind of whatever shape you want to call it. So right now with this peyote stitch, I'm adding a bead. And it's creating basically that building block. So if you don't know peyote stitch, you are working to create basically, think of it as a brick wall. You're adding a bead, skipping the next bead in line, and sewing through the next one. So say I'm coming out right now of bead number one, I add a new bead, I skip bead number two, and I go into bead number three. That's gonna get you that peyote stitch look. I'll do two more and then I'll turn the corner and show you how to. All right, I have an odd amount here. I'm going to ignore that last bead and not go into it because I'm gonna do even count here. So, oh, Lindsay said, hi, Bella. What? Lindsay said, hi, Bella. She can see you a little bit, Miss Lindsay. All right, so I'm coming back here and I'm going back in to create this corner. She seemed really, really excited, Lindsay, that you said hello. So, really excited. Uh, wanting to make something special for frontline workers in healthcare. Any idea for Phyllis? Um, so they're not going to be, so I would do it as a thank you for them to take home with them because they are not going to be wearing anything for like anything other than probably say wedding bands, they're going to avoid wearing things because they don't want anything to come home with them. But I would say a pin, honestly. I would make them pins to pin on to things. All right, so here we are cornering. So think hopscotch for the start of peyote. Then you sew individual beads into the gap. Exactly. So did she use pearls in Thursday stream? She did use pearls in Thursday stream, okay. So anyway, I'm going into corner here. So I'm at the point where I'm supposed to add another bead in my peyote stitch, but guess what? I'm not going to. I'm going to completely skip that. So I'm sewing from one to the other, skipping it. Now if I pull tight, you're gonna start to notice that that's gonna pull next to one another. That's how I'm gonna get that turn. All right, so we're gonna come back down the line and then we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna add in a couple more beads into my peyote skip a bead, and it starts to end up looking like herringbone stitch. 
Bella keeps hitting the production light. Okay. Bead goes on. And so there's my first turn. So you can see how that's starting to turn already. Now what I'm going to do is next time I sew through and I'm coming back down the line, I get my beads on. When you turn the corner, you get a bead on. Turn the corner. Boop. And I'm using a size 12 needle. So I have a size 12 needle on here and some .006 wildfire beading thread. So Miss Bella, your tie-dyedness is kind of taking over the uh, side of side of the side of the stream here. All right. So on goes that next bead. All right. Now I'm at that corner again. So if you don't have a really really sharp turn, you don't want that 90 degree. You can add like a 15O or even one seed bead in the middle. I want that sharp turn, so I'm going to go straight through to the next bead here on the corner. Again, see that it starts to look like that herringbone stretch, that you have two beads going on in a row, and then I pull tightly, and that corner happens immediately. So the more I keep going, the more that this cornering is going to start to take effect. So Bella's arms looks like a toucan. Yeah, she has on a nice, uh, colorful, tie-dyed sweatshirt. So she does look a little bit like a toucan as she's coming up here. But this is how you're going to get that cornering effect, is when you're looking at everything. You put it on, and you get to that middle. So basically that's kind of like downgrading, that's how you're going to get your shapes. One limitation that you're going to have is how much it's going to bend. As you start coming in and doing this more and more, it's going to start bending in more and more to get that shape. This then would sit right on top of that nice drop or it could sit on the side of one of your triangles and each time you're getting to an edge you make sure to start doing that little downgrade stitch if you hate seeing a little bit of thread after the fact hey Lindsay after the fact you'll go in and you'll just sew a bead right over the top of it so that's going to be kind of the way to downgrade and make it into that triangle too Hello from Sugarland, Texas. Hello to uh, Renita, sorry, Renita from Texas. So hopefully this answered some people's questions. Does anybody have a question about this process of kind of creating that corner turn and how to make that actually work as you're going in and creating? Actually, I think Lindsay has bezeled a teardrop. And it's, it's a little funky at the start to try to figure out where that actual count is going to be. Um, she wrote our blog post for beading and jewelry making, or for um, bezeling, and we have different sizes along the back. But that's going to be your answer to how to go in and create this bezel, is basically you're going to play around with that shape of starting that peyote stitch and then making it into, from the rounded to that nice bead section. And anytime you need to go in and make it into a triangle, you're just going to do it more. Because basically you're working your way back from that triangle form. All right. Hello from Pasco, Washington. So hello to Letty as well. And to Teresa. And to Dina. And trying to see if I missed anybody else. And to Phyllis as well. So, oh, Phyllis, back to that. Uh, any ideas for healthcare workers? So, yes, Phyllis, I would say definitely a pin. I think of my mom... And she was a nurse. She always, now they have to do different scrubs and, and whatnot, and healthcare workers are super safe, but a lot of them have to wear lanyards. And if they have to wear lanyards with their phone attached or something like that, a nice little pin would be a great idea for your kind of uh, frontline workers in order to make something. Uh, what color is that gorgeous triangle? This triangle is just crystal AB. That's all it is, is it's crystal AB. Wah. More like birds, speaking of toucans, and you're like, oh, drawn to, drawn to the sides and the sparkle. It is a crystal AB, and it's 23 millimeters is what the triangle is. So I'm going to be playing with the triangle and doing a bezel for the triangle as well, too. So tried to do an order on the kits. The MM10 isn't working. Tina, make sure to make a, order, a comment in your order notes, and we'll go in. I will have Bella text Miss Amber and ask her to check the coupon code and make sure that it's working. Mm -hmm. So I make it look so easy, thanks. 
Uh, will this be up later so we can go back for reference? Yeah, Joanna, so this YouTube or this Facebook Live will be up later on YouTube. We'll take this recording, basically throw it up on YouTube as well. And then it's also always on Facebook too. So with the uh, triangle kind of dilly dally here, um, I will go in and I will do an actual bezel for it so people can see how that triangle shape happens or how that drop shape has is happening as well again too. So they're actually 20 millimeter, he said. The triangles are actually 20 millimeter. Well, our tag says 23. Nathan, since you're on, do you want to check that coupon code for Tina and see why the MM10 isn't working? If you want to, you want to check that out. Because those of you that are joining in and wondering and checking out, we have um, March Madness going on right now. So that even though we can't do basketball and everything, we are doing March Madness. And today is kits and patterns are. 10% uh, 10 10 off, let me get, yeah, 10% off on kits and patterns. So if you've been eyeing up our patterns or our kits, make sure to check that out. And then tomorrow is Super Duos and Mini Duos, and that's MM11. So check the face, or check our website for the banner along the top, and that'll give you an idea for those and how you're doing those. One of the other things that somebody asked, so Renee asked as we're kind of finishing up and if you have any other questions, ask away because I'm gonna we're gonna be finishing up here shortly. Bella is starving, so Bella is starving. So if you are, um, if you are looking for a bead and you come across a size 10 bead, so Renee said, what is a size 10 bead and what can I do with a size 10 OC bead? So a lot of uh, a lot of check C beads are size 10. So there's not a ton of C beads that are manufactured in Japan that are size 10. Usually in Japan you're going to get 15, then 11, then 8, then 6, then 2. So there's kind of this gap of 15, 11, 8, 6, and 2 when you're thinking of things that are produced by the Miyuki brand. When you're going to actually think about a size 10 bead, you're going to think about it as between the size 8 and the size 11. Most size 11 patterns will work for a 10, but just worry about um, kind of the fact that it's a little bit bigger. So you might have to try some out. A lot of times the size 10 beads, which are usually manufactured in the Czech Republic, they're an, an older bead. A lot of times they're going to be inconsistent. Check out the video that I just did for the raw stitch in the freeform raw or freeform peyote. That's a great use for some of those beads. So I uh, would love to hear more about how we started Potomac. That's from Kelly. So Potomac beads start in. Um, Miyuki does have a 10 -0. It's just not very common. There you go. Thanks, Nathan, for, for getting in there for me. Um, Potomac beads started. We are on year... 15 this year will be 15 and when I was getting ready to graduate college I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and I beat it and I love to make jewelry and my now husband then boyfriend at the time said when I was getting ready to graduate you should move to the town that I'm from and we should open up a or you should open up a bead store to do and I thought that's a great backup plan and it's not that expensive because I'm just not going to pay off my student loans and instead we're going to open a bead store so Nathan still had a full-time job, and I graduated uh, from college in May, and we opened the bead store in November after that, and we opened up in a small uh, 600, 700 square foot space across from the library here in Hagerstown, Maryland. Quickly realized that more people did this and we needed to get out um, of that small space, and then we started franchising and started opening more locations as well. So I was 22 when we opened the first Potomac Bee location. And uh, as we get a little bit older, I don't get the weird questions anymore. Usually the drivers, the UPS drivers, those sort of people, they all go to the oldest people in the room to get them to sign. 
So for years, I never had to sign for any packages because any employees were older than me. So they always assumed that they were the owners, so it was kind of nice. But yeah, so that's how we started Potomac Beads. And then within uh, eight months of our first location, Nathan was able to quit his job and we started doing it full time. So it's been kind of a whirlwind sort of a, sort of a time. And we are now almost 15 years in. So it's been great and I wouldn't change it. I would change some decisions we made, but hey, it's all a learning process. So had I not made those mistakes then, I probably would make them now and they'd be worse. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. All right, so looking back, wondering if four pound stretch is strong enough. So four pound for seed beating, yes, going to be strong enough, use it. So the poundage is kind of a funky thing that wildfire or fire lines still reference poundage. Four pound is usually a point zero zero four point zero zero five. That's gonna be wildfire. You can use it, it's a little bit thin, but it'll work. Feet isn't working so well, but thank you for the stream, Allie. You are welcome, Teresa. So her student loans are now paid off. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nate. We'll we'll like that comment. Uh, my student loans are now paid off, so Miss coming to the Chambersburg store and doing classes. Kathy, it's been a fun and random transition. The nice thing is going from having tons of locations to kind of a central warehouse has allowed us to maintain a family life too, which is great because we have four kids and we decided to kind of shift from the actual retail space, which obviously in today's climate is amazing and an amazing decision, but we did, um, we did change it and kind of morphed things around and now I don't have to travel so much with having lots of kids and I get to be around my kids a lot more. And now a lot more I get to be around them. So now this is weird. Uh, do you have a necklace? You have a pattern for a free form necklace? No, I don't have a pattern for a free form necklace. However, a free form necklace would be the same as a free form bracelet and a freeform bracelet in peyote or raw stitch would be the exact same thing as well. So if you're looking to do a freeform peyote, freeform raw, any of those, same deal. If you wanna make a choker or a necklace for it, you're just going to basically continue. The freeform uh, peyote, you could do a freeform peyote. Think of the Bubble Bliss bracelet where you have multi-hold beads too, a rope style would be more of that free form that would work really well for a longer necklace if you're looking for that. Can we make a 12 millimeter Rivoli frame with 11-0 check beads alone without sewing to 15s for the final row? You definitely can. So if you're looking to do a 12 millimeter Rivoli with just 11-0s, if you don't have any 15s, what you're gonna do is start skipping, just like I did when it came to creating this kind of little triangle and skipping a peyote stitch, you're gonna do the same thing as you get to your inner row. Instead of going through every bead and adding another 11 OC bead, skip and do kind of a pico trim. So go, say you're doing peyote stitch and you have beads one, two, three. Usually you go out of one, add a new bead, go into three. The next time, don't add a new bead, skip right over to bead number four. Then add a bead on top of bead number five, throw through six. So same deal, start to kind of close it up and you can do it with all just one size beads. So, all right, it's great to have trust in the owners. Thanks, Teresa, yeah. Was always such fun, but glad it's working better for you and your family. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, it's been a crazy transition over the last 15 years going from our one tiny store in Hagerstown to 12 locations kind of across uh, the US and overseas as well and then bringing it back. And now, please keep in mind our Ocean City, New Jersey store and our Minnesota store. Obviously, they're closed right now, Alexandria, Minnesota. Um, they are still opening and they do a great job with having retail stores, especially in the climate that we are in. So they are really, really preparing and gearing up, hopefully, to be able to open back up this summer as well. And those, in case you've always wondered, the Ocean City, New Jersey store is actually my parents, so my dad, Bill. So if you ever have been in the Ocean City, New Jersey store, Bill's my dad, so the guy that's in there. And then my mom, Sue, she's in there sometimes. We talked my parents out of retirement and into opening a bead store location. And then Bella wanted to work with them for the summer, so we'll see where, where we are come summertime. But that's my dad, Bill, and then uh, Deb and Kyle in Minnesota were actually customers of ours in our Chambersburg store that were from State College 
and they opened up in Alexandria, Minnesota when they retired and went closer to Kyle's family. Beautiful area near the lake there. Uh, we were hoping to get up there this summer. We'll have to see kind of how it's going. So do I have classes online? So Valerie, um, we have over, I think we're over 1,600 YouTube videos. So if you're looking for kind of an online class, we have those YouTube videos. The other thing that we're doing now once a month live is we are doing a actual class live. The class live will be on YouTube. My last live class, kind of looking back here, was, do, 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 do. let's see. I did one beginning of March somewhere. Do, 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 do. Somewhere in there. Anyway. Oh, uh, Friday the 13th. So the next, actually, YouTube Live is going to be on the 17th of April. Bridget will be taking the lead on the YouTube Live. We will have, by the probably by Wednesday, a list of all the materials that we'll, you need because we are going in and um, making sure to try to do things that people have a lot of materials on. So Bridget's getting a design together on April 17th, save the date. We will be live at noon on Friday, April 17th. That's right, my last one was Friday the 13th. Um, so this one is April 17th is Bridget live noon on Friday, and we will be going in and creating uh, as well something. So we'll publish that. Do we do tours of our building? So we're actually moving. So we are moving from our current location to a new warehouse about three blocks away, closer to my house, three blocks closer. We won't have that full mile to walk anymore. And uh, we are going to be at a new facility there and we have kind of all the different areas that we work in. So we still do have the option for people to make appointments and to come in the store and shop. Just be aware that we like those ahead of time about a week so we know we have the staff there and that we're not planning on doing any live recording in the actual warehouse. So that's that's a fun there. So going back kind of and checking out questions here, let's see if I missed anything. Um, do you have YouTube or Facebook on bead covering a button? Yes, so um, Jeanette, we do have a the clasp in the braided bars. Yes, there is a YouTube video on covering a button. So if you go into YouTube and you go in and check that, we will be going and um, I think Anna does it. She covers an actual button. And then I have a cup button cover as well. I like Anna's a lot. It goes over kind of that last spiral peyote stitch as well. And then Eva said, yeah, April 17th is the week after Easter. So I don't know about you guys, but we were just told that we won't be going back to school basically till April 30th. I have a feeling it will be extending beyond that time period and that we're probably off for the whole year but it's going to be kind of a crazy time. We're getting and doing as much as we can. In our facility here in our warehouse, we have uh, 8,000 square feet, which is awesome because we can kind of individually quarantine everybody's working stations. And most of our employees are working from home, which they've been amazing and awesome and trying to deal with kids and working from home. And a shout out to our awesome staff working with it. We're also working in shifts, and then we're not doing recordings together, too, so that way we're not sitting close to one another. So if you see me live here, it's pretty much going to be with uh, Bella <laughs> rather than Bridget. She and I are kind of coming in, wiping everything down, and uh, switching off when we work. So we're working in shifts now. It's interesting. I come in really early and get done my day so I can go home and watch my kids and then as I leave somebody else comes and then as they leave somebody else comes so we're working in these staggered shifts um, and kind of working through it and because we do have the big facility we have our own little working areas and we're able to work really far away from one another uh, while also making sure that we are being safe and productive at home and kind of self-quarantining all of ourselves except for interacting with that little tiny bit of one another that we do see each other at the workplace but you know we stay away from each other which is sad I'm not a hugger I'm an extrovert for sure but I'm not a hugger and I messaged my friends and said after all of this I think I'm gonna be a hugger because you know you want to feel that interaction with people and be able to get close with people and uh, it's a little difficult right now because you can't but the best thing about this all um, tell them to keep saying thank you for keep filling our orders to keep us sane Valerie you are very welcome um, Melissa and I are kind of heading up 
the getting all the orders out. Yesterday, we finally got caught up that uh, any orders that came in before noon yesterday got shipped out yesterday. So we, we are catching up along that um, and staying staying happy with all of that. So we are definitely staying, staying safe and, and staying sane. As always with these lives, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to head out because Annabella is starving and needs food, even though I told her to grab it before we, we came along. Um, we should be that. So code should be fixed. So Nathan said thank you for waiting. Code should be fixed. If you send an order in and your code was not working for pits, kits or patterns, just send me an email to info at. I'll go back and we can credit you for that um, or refund for anything that wasn't working. So make sure to do that. As always with these lives, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be coming live again on Tuesday. So Tuesday at uh, 1, I will be here on Facebook Live. You can join me. And on Facebook Live, maybe I'll continue. Actually, I think I'm going to Tuesday's Live bezel around the triangle. So if anybody wants to grab a PC triangle, if you happen to have a triangle that you want to bezel, I think I'm going to make a bezel for the new triangle crystals as I go in and create for Tuesday. And then I will let you guys know by Tuesday what the material list is going to be for Bridget's design for our YouTube Live on the 17th. So thank you guys, everybody, for watching. Um, Dina, you are welcome. She says, thank you, Allie and Bella. Bella watching around the corner with her headphones on and pretending she's not there. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay sane, keep building and uh, beating and uh, making kind of that world go around, making people happy, being nice and kind in our Facebook group to one another and uh, staying connected in that way. Thanks guys so much for watching and I will catch you on Tuesday here live. Remember to check out those March Madness deals and uh, get to beating. See you everybody.